to this Sunday country, Mero Andres community. Good morning, I am Saint Pichar, teacher number three, Bombay County, Mero Tikanari. I come from the land of Sancho and Happiness, this year I'm all over in Hungary, and this is the first thing I do. Our wedding, my uncle, the owner of Bobo County, I represent Bobo County, the pledges of nature. And today is going to begin with, we have been told, it's going to start off with, um, with the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. So this is the expenditure portion of the budget. I believe by doing some housekeeping, uh, as you are aware, since last week we started the budget process and uh, we were able to complete our revenue year. On the overall, it is important to note that uh, we received a budget of 692 million. Us, as at the beginning of discussions, because of the daily orders that were passed, the budget is already not a balanced budget. And so, our work in the first place during the revenue year was to ensure that we, as much as possible, close the gap and find additional funding. We are grateful to all the colleagues, all the ministries, in particular the Ministry of Finance and uh, Development and the Revenue Authority that sat with us painstakingly to ensure that we we did a very good job. And I am I'm honored and grateful that we were able to do significantly in ensuring that either the gap is closed and all we found additional revenue. As we start today, it's important to note that, of course, taking on the background of economics that resources all these case. And so as you come along today, I know that every agency and or institution will come with the backdrop in their mind that will be more money. Yes, we all need more money, but we need to be cognizant of the fact that we are operating in a tech space and by and large, as we move forward and empower the revenue authority even more, we can grow our budget to the billion dollar mark and beyond so that the space increases for everyone else. So as a committee, while we are listening, we want you to be cognizant of that fact that yes, we are going to make the necessary appropriations, but we're in the context of working in what we have done. Everyone will be not necessarily have what you want, but we will try our best to be by the parcel such that everyone else gets something. We need to be clear as a joint committee that everything that came from the Ministry of Finance is a proposal and as and when we pass the budget, it becomes fine. Also for the record, uh, the Ministry of Finance needs to note that after we shall pass the budget, Presumably, on or before the end of month, we will expect in three weeks at most to have a final copy of the budget as agreed from our city. So we will not be operating again from this draft. We will have a final copy that will then uh, show the numbers uh, that we will approve. I will take a break quickly and, uh, and allow my honorable senator from Rivaji, who is just entered who is the Joint Secretary of the Committee to, to introduce himself. Okay, so that I, Francis Dopo, former resident of the Senate of Rivaji County. So, 
Like we said, our intention is to pass the budget before the end of month. But it's contingent on your presence and our presence and our joint co uh, cooperation. Uh, noting from how we start today, it is almost probable that we may not pass the budget if we continue this line. We may run into the We don't want that. I'm sure the Ministry of Finance does not want that. And so I'd like to encourage all of us to take note of the time we are going to be starting at 9 o'clock. Breakfast is 8 o'clock. 9 o'clock on the dial will start. We have agreed as a joint committee that the quorum are set from day one is the quorum that is running. In other words, once I am here as the chair or any of my deputies uh, here, we will start the process. We don't have to wait for anyone else. We are texting for the committee, the joint committee, but we can start with one person because we already have a quorum at any point in time. I'll take a break here and have the two colleagues who gentlemen us introduce themselves. Uh, and I hope as soon as we start, everyone else that comes to not be introduced, ask them when you are asking your question, you will introduce yourself. Uh, the Honorable Jeffrey Berry from Magibi. Good morning, I'm Honorable Ellen A. Antoler from Magibi County District No. 3. A post here on ways and means and comments. Good morning, your honor. My name is Mrs. Sumitekta, Mary Kumeke, District No. 3, Mary Kipa County. So, we sent our letters already to all the institutions. We let to make any institution that does not show up for the hearing, this committee will decide of it by our own judgment. In our mind, if you don't count, it means you may not need money to operate. There will be a period of action. And that period of action is going to be on your regular on your expenditure line. Again, this is very serious. We are the deputies of the people, we are the owners of the budget. And if anyone thinks that you can uh, disrespect that's the real world, our committee, the period of measure is going to be painstaking for your institution. Having said that, would like to jump straight into business. Uh, I, we have already discussed you today a period where the Ministry of Finance, the Library Authority, both tax and bill will appear alongside the Library Authority, uh, the Ministry of Health, Joint Kennedy National Health Institute of Liberia, and Jackson M. will be the ones we are handling today. This is the process that we're going to use. The institution uh, will make a presentation, and then all the colleagues along the, uh, the table will have not more than three minutes to ask a question or make a statement. We have got the civil society here. They will be an integral part of this discussion. And so we will have three questions from the civil society. And yeah, through uh, from the civil society, and your questions will be routed through our secretary, that is uh, the LPO. And so I hope our colleagues from the LPO, I see uh, Mrs. Copa, Mr. Copa is here. And so please arrange that as the discussions are ongoing. Uh, members of the civil society who are here, who may want to have, ask a question or make a statement uh, to be responded. You can do. Uh, you're not asking us. We are asking questions too. So you'll be asking in this case when we start Minister of Manas to explain and not um, when we get out of the process. I hope I've not left anything uh, uh, done. And so we will start with the Minister of Manas, call on the Sanya Arms, and then we start quickly. Thank you. Shall we all rise, please? Raise the right hand. Ministry of Honors, please. Ministry of Honors, please. Yeah. Uh, 
because of the external troubles of our senior management, we will beg your indulgence that you swear two of our nominees, one for the Economic Management Division, this is Minister so, Destiny, and you also know so, what so, 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 let's, let's do it this way. Introduce your entire team, and then we'll do this way. Well, okay. So, so our speaker here is Anthony J. Myers, the Deputy Minister for Fiscal Affairs, Finance and Development Planning. And with me is uh, our Bill McGill Jones, Deputy Minister for Administration. He will be doing a presentation for the Ministry of Internal Operations. Then we have uh, Madam Sarah McGill Molda, Assistant Minister for Budget and Acting Deputy Minister for Budget and Development Planning. And next to her is Karen Ize Yankwe, Assistant Minister Designate for Economic Policy and Artist ORC for Department of Economic Management. And finally, we have Emmanuel D. Williams. He is the Senior Planning Officer and an Officer in Charge of the Division of Planning. Okay, so Thank you, thank you, Minister. Uh, my understanding is uh, the two of them, they are not confirmed persons. Yes. So they are not going to be taking any oath, as a matter of fact, because they are not be speaking here. So they will join you from the back and give you any information that we need. Uh, this, uh, this, this hearing is only going to be concerning those who are confirmed uh, officers of the uh, the ministry, but it will be at your back uh, and give you any uh, uh, support as we give this uh, Thank you. So the 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 uh, second hand will administer the book to the pre. Uh, this way, is your right hand. Call your name. Call your name and repeat after me. I. I. Do solemnly swear. That the testimony I am about to give, as it relates to this hearing, will be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Now you can be seated. Mr. Chairman and members of the Joint Committee, always meet and find us. I am done. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, you start your presentation. Uh, the Senator is going to make an inquiry. Senator. Yes, yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The same way you call it. Minister. My, uh, during the very new year, we, we asked for a couple of information to prepare her for the expenditure hearing. That has to do with the actual expenditure for 2023. Because we know that you have in your fiscal alternative, uh, normally we are used to seeing it as estimate. But we have the 93 last already, so we thought that if you have given us the actual spending for 2020, did you put that? Yes, the basic work is done, so the administrative as well printing and collation is the issue. So today or tomorrow, we will bring to you one day. Fiscal outing of 2023, as well as the draft of the financial report from the Controller and Handling General Department. So, uh, Minister, uh, let, let's just make this very clear. As we allocate, we want to allocate based on actuals, and so we, we, we may be to give you a dispensation, but uh, I would think that we need that report before the close of the day. Because again, to, to even do your allocation, we have to see what your actuals were. 
So uh, I understand that you are doing printing. It has a ministry of finance. Printings can be done in a jiffy. So uh, we, we it's required that that report is available on or before two o'clock uh, today. Thank you. The, the, the presentation is going to be done in this month. The minister is going to give us an overall presentation on the entire project in terms of expenditure before we turn to uh, the Ministry of Finance as, a, as an institution. So, Minister, your time. Okay, so I'm going to give a summary of what we have done of the national budget, of the revenue which we exhausted. Last week, we will still be to reference it in this hearing, and also a summary of the expenditure budget and some policy issues surrounding the budget process. Then, following the labor draft 2024 budget legislative budget hearings. So, there are four key issues I will cover in summary the overview of the budget, the revenue. And expenditure envelopes and the policies as an investment plan and the policies that inform the budget process. Okay. okay, so for the expenditure summary, as we go, is uh, we give the basic economic classification, compensation, which takes the biggest share of the recurring budget of 640.5 million. And you have goods and services uh, 90, subsidies 101%, and then debt takes uh, 19%, and PSRP 7%. This adds up to the total expenditure projection of 692.4, which of course we will note, as the chairman mentioned, as the outcomes of these hearings have changed into our budget and expenditure processes. Grants and subsidies to sub-national institutions and non-governmental institutions, as well as the policy on aid coordination. Maybe we have to harmonize allocations to different sectors in line with external resources that are flowing into those sectors, so as to get a balance in our public expenditure. And the priorities for national planning, of course, we mentioned them in six areas of the government's or, or policy priorities in the next five years. And these are the things that will form the national planning agenda. Then the updates on the national plan, as we speak, uh, there are three key layers of planning that have been identified. First, there will be a national development priorities of all the sectors, whether it is the key economic sectors, like the arrest, or the end tech sectors, which are the learning sectors that make up the functions of the, of the government. Then there will be 15 country development agendas. So the national plan is expected to have two levels, because we are planning in the context of decentralization. Several laws have been passed in relation to that. The local government act, the revenue sharing law, and others. There are also a public sector investment program. The enter based program budget we talk about will be largely centered around the public sector investment program. And then, anyway, MFDB operations, of which the DMA will get more details. There are two main categories. Uh, overall, the ministry has a budget of around 176 million, of 172 million. Of that amount, 156 consists of national claims. National claims mean debt, domestic and standard, subsidies to sub-national and national institutions as well as non-governmental institutions. This make up the national claims of 156 million. And for the ministry's co-operation budget, you will realize that there's almost a 4 million decline compared to last year, from 34 million to 16.8 million. And the table on the MLDP 
of operation whole budget, our lands that we come to make this clear to distinguish between national claims and whole budget because there is often the perception that when there are hundreds of billions in the ministry's budget, the Ministry of Finance budget is increasing. So we have to make a decision between what is national claims that the ministry must spend on behalf of the general government and why is the ministry whole internal administration project. So with that said, the committee, thank you, and now ask the assistant leader of budget to do the detailed presentation on the expenditure side of the national budget. So, one more second. Uh, uh, there are other policy issues uh, that uh, should be coming up today that will have an impact on. on Expiration in or revenue that we may suffer in an implementation of it. Please do. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say. Honorable Chair, members of the Honorable Body here today, I'm honored to have the opportunity to present before the Body on the Tikkun expenditure uh, plan for 2024. But our plan was in summary, and most of what we plan to talk about has already been covered. By the acting, by the acting minister. So, be repetitive. I think we'll just go straight to provide some summary information about the different categories. Then, when you see the issue about debt, debt constitutes 19 percent of the entire envelope, and you have the project budget which constitutes 7 percent. And the total required budget is 74%. And the logic behind the different percentages, you see there's information about why the development budget is the more minimum uh, among the different categories. We are aware that the development budget is going to land with different frameworks. And for this year, it's the first year of the government. Our plan was premised on the arrest agenda and also policy statements that were made by the president. And when this government took over, we found all our institutions had minimal funds to operate. So our focus for this budget is actually to we uh, uh, institute the institutions to ensure that at least they have some minimum funding for operations so they can buy computers, they get printers, because if you have to roll out at the PSRP level, you need functional institutions that will be able to roll out. And for that, we found out that the confidence of the, of the government was low, because most of the banks, most of the private institutions, they have problems with the government. We have a huge portfolio of debt, and we have to negotiate with them, because they are the nuclear of the economy. So we have to negotiate with them to see, to rebuild the confidence. And so we see how it's a tough decision that we took to come up with 129 million for them. That way it show that the businesses, at least they have some startup form to help because when you look at the revenue component, we have a huge portion that is funded through to destroy them. Looking at it, we know that the best we can do is to ensure that the economy bonds, because now uh, external revenue is a sharp decline in external revenues. We 
We look at the second components of the, the expenditure you, have, you have observed that public administration has 40%, and that is triggered by the death number, which is under public administration. And you see, next is education and security rule of law. But this chart is going to change every year based on the priority of the government. So this year, you see education, you have a sharp increase here of 1.7 million. That goes to the, the, the youth training that was pronounced by the president, the 10,000 youth. So here you see security and rule of law, and let's come in infrastructure. For projects, the PSRP, we have 51 million for projects, and it's divided uh, among the different sectors, public administration, agriculture, commerce and industry, all of the other sectors are included here in the presentation. And as the minister said, the priority sector, we have for, for agriculture, roads, rule of law, education, sanitation, and, and tourism. Those are the priority sectors that we see this year that are captured with role leading because we know the major, major point for the president is role, and we have this plan of it's showing that the roads are fired in this first year, so more emphasis have been placed on roads. He has already talked about the, the structure for the National Development Plan, so I don't want to take much of our time on that. And for the policy areas, as we said, for example, the general response planning and budgeting, we want to show through this to ensure that the budget reflects the needs of all the ordinary people. We want to ensure that the planning process is decentralized, that we capture the men, the needs of men, the needs of women. We want to ensure that whatsoever intervention from the start of government, it reflects the needs of the people and that we are being sensitive to that. The, the MTEC rule out. We do understand when you take the budget, you look at the line items, sometimes it's difficult to align. What if you, if you plan for trash can, what is it that trash can is going against? What is it that is going against? So with MTEC, it gives you that clear problematic or mindset. You know exactly if trash can is going to this, you know which program that trash can also is being uh, aligned to. So we want to get a clear picture of the budget instead of using live item, want to ensure that it moves at the program level and also be easy for reporting. At least you know where your money is now tied to climate change. We are all aware around here about the effects of climate change. So we cannot ignore the fact that planning, whatsoever, to the infrastructure side, to the agriculture side, we are all seeing the different effects of climate change. So how do we ensure that as a nation, when we are planning, how do we recognize the effect of those things and we play adequately towards that? The greatest subsidy policy has been a huge challenge for us, and we know that in time past, we reviewed and observed several challenges with that policy. So, currently, we intend to review the policy and see how implementation is going against the policy. So, that review is already. Is currently on, and we're going to ensure that things will be done differently in line with the policy uh, instead of what is currently happening with the grants and subsidy policy. Because we know the intent of that is to buttress government's efforts where central governments cannot reach. So if you have private institutions that are receiving government's funds and their operations are still not impacting the community and the society and the cost of their operations still remain the same, yet they are receiving government funds. That sets a red flag and we have to review that and show that funds that are allocated to them are actually used for the internal purpose. And the national policy on aid coordination, we know our aid portfolio in this country is even much higher than our national budget. So we do have economic management and the entire team for the Ministry of Finance now reviewing the coordination of aids that are coming in. Most of the comes in, the impact you honorable people in our legislature, you, you go to the counties, sometimes when you see the final dashboard, you see money that comes from there, when you relate that to the counties, you know that the impact is already shown. 
So we're trying to see how best we can coordinate it, uh, coming in to align it actually to national priorities to ensure that they actually impact the people that it's intended for. And I think that's it. This has already spoken more of the expenditure side. So in some way, those are things that we intend to consider going forward on this year, 2024, and then subsequently 2025. Thanks. Thank you, uh, a very big thank you to the minister, acting minister, and the acting Dep uh, deputy minister of the budget. That was a very good presentation. Giving us a backdrop of um, the rationale behind the distribution, uh, Arabic sector, uh, and every other thing that you've considered uh, uh, wise uh, yeah. making the allocation. What we've done is an overall of the distribution control work. And so, uh, based on um, requests as made by one of our colleagues, we will not go into finance ministry as a unit. We will take questions on the government distribution. Uh, so, uh, colleagues will be allowed three minutes max if you don't have a question. Your colleague will be have uh, more questions. But I'm going to be ensuring that we stick with the time. So questions and or comments will be allowed now from the two presentations made by the acting minister and the acting deputy minister on the overall allocation as a country. Thank you. You'll be recognized. Is there anyone who will be there? If no one has a question, I'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Minister. Uh, you talked about the things that you want to do. Uh, the pieces that you just made, are they in the, are they captured in the, what do you call it, or like going forward? So there are some I captured. Use the map, please. Some are captured in the 2024 budget and some are plans for 2025 budget. Okay. So, um, do you believe that the arrest is fully captured in the budget? The arrest agenda? Start from now. T. Two is it? If we do, no, the, the entire. The entire, the entire five pillars of the arrest and general and that show they are all covered. And we understand tourism is one of the key priorities, but we know that huge assessment that needs to be done before the actual work begins. So first day, so first day now at this point. Two is not counting because the entire two is zero. The fact that two is zero is not counting. Yes, I may add to that. Yes, all of the sectors of the continuation are level one. The issue of uh, setting up the requisite administrative structure, who will make the plan. Two, the fact that we still discussing the budget. And then secondly, a tourism bill as we go is being developed to come to this party. So you will not find all of the the arrest items in this budget of this year. But definitely they will be in the next year's budget as we have to start here. So quickly your 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 technicians are in the background. Can you uh, as we are asking questions? Before you get to me, I want to have agriculture, how much? Rules, how much? I want to see a mess as this first per number. So we regret to the way to ask you that. Mr. Minister, um, any 
do you still bring it to us the uh, request for the actual period for a CE or PSRP? 3.6 million for the social development service sector. Page B3R. Is it different from the country development fund? The national budget, which we are in your in your briefing, you got three point six million district development projects. Is it different from the country development fund? The two hundred thousand and one account is it different from it? Yes, that is that is different. Okay, that is different from the country development fund. So, if it is different for me, it means a PM for the second term. Will you account for the first one? So, will they read the statement of the budget for 2023? We have 3.6 million district development for under the Ministry of Finance. Can you check the record? Well, I, I will not speak too clearly about 2023, but for this year, 3.6 million, I know exactly. Why it is? Because in the draft that was written, first land was handed, and in our negotiation with, which was the off record negotiation. You know, so. yeah. The gentleman time has expired. Uh, based on those who are asking questions, we will revert to him. We want to stick with the time. Honorable Senator, uh, please notice that uh, your time has expired, and then we can come back to you. Whether there are questions, I may even give. I'll talk to you. Thank you. The Senate and the Honorable from Bond uh, County. Madam, I took the video with this um, for you from this. My concern has to do with the domestic debt. We got almost $69 million of the domestic debt. I'm concerned whether you give on a detailed listing of those individuals and if we have payment schedule so that we can have an idea as who are those creditors or the contracts and all kinds of stuff because who have sixty nine million dollars in domestic debt, it is a concern. And I would also want to go to the flip side of that question is do we have any record that the, the past government ever made payments to some of those institutions that we are indebted to? And if it is yes, we can provide all that information. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just do that question. Any? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Minister, let me take you to the summary where you have 7% from ESRP, which is development, and city of uh, deficit. And seventy-two percent for the current uh, expenditure. Thank you for this information. My concern here is this presentation tells me that development is minimal, very minimal. And you know the country cannot move forward if development is not captured. Consider the arrest. I don't know the total percentage of the arrest. Even though you mentioned here some are captured, some are plans to move forward to uh, next year, and all I so my question would be within this seven percent, can you give us a clear understanding of how much the arrest, each line of the arrest constitutes? Because if we are looking the four percent of recurring expenditure, I don't think we are moving anywhere. In this country, we have to develop, we have to consider the development assets. And at that, it is seven percent. What is your opinion moving forward? We will revert to the ministry for our responses of the two concerns.
Yeah. Okay, starting with the last question on the honorable. So between the 625 million that was the first draft that was returned and this draft, and that has a change of around less than 17 million. So substantively, nothing changed either. And of that 60 plus million, 40 percent of it were loose coming from the war bank and that are targeted. So essentially, the only additional increment from domestic sources that were made between the two draft budget was just around 17 or so million. So when you consider that, and the fact that we managed, as the acting deputy minister indicated, to have some exam operation funds to ministries, whereas in the first draft they were zero. And we still managed, for example, to get of the 51 million for PSRB, 22 million of them are related to 100 degrees slash arrest activities that we were able to pause and have planned for. At because at those time, at that time, those ministries had functional management. So it is all of those things that factor into the low presentation, the low ratio of PSRP or the rest as a component of the budget now. So we, we do acknowledge that the resource center is tied that allocation to key priorities is very minimal, especially from the executive track. We, we recognize that, which is why in our conversation with this body, we will have to adopt policies to expand the resource envelope, as our minister said in the first hearing, expand the economy, expand the taxable component of the economy, and also take some measures and adopt some policies that reduces tax expenditure, such as exemptions and waivers, so that we can have greater resource envelope for for. for allocation. And with respect to the honor rules uh, uh, post question about the debt listing, yes we do have and we will share shortly. We will share the listing for the payment to institutions since they are public, but the list for vendors because of contractual confidentiality, we will share limited copies. We make the intention for that because we have to Yes. When you are using public funds and you're talking about contractual confidentiality, I don't understand. Because when the government of Liberia is going to sign a contract with me, it's not a private thing, it is a public thing. So to be talking about confidentiality in publishing the list of debts, I am concerned about it. We want the details and the follow up to that. I mean, flip side of it was did the past government make payments to some of those debts? And what are those institutions they were paid? And how much they were paid? That we are still as a survival million. Okay, I'm going to be clarified. The confidential debt company I'm talking about was the one who owed to vendors, private business people, and individuals. We don't have, and we don't have the privilege without our consent to publicly. Okay, the information on a report, since it has to do with confidentiality, we will ask that you present those documents to the committee so we can analyze them. The information is noted, I think it settles the matter because again, that's where I was going. I there are contracts that government signs with vendors, and in contrast, there are clauses that vary against some principal issues. As we sit here, all of these documents now, they are not just ours, anyone can take them, but because of the confidentiality issue, those uh, submissions will be made directly uh, to the committee. So, so uh, we we are all say the same thing. Yes, there's confidentiality, but when it comes to us as the deputies of the people, we are privy to, to exactly. So it's noted. No Any other, uh, we will be referring to uh, the gentleman from San Mateo. 
Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Minister, my question has to do with the campaign that we have done. In prepared government, money will be allocated for counting. Like my own country, Sano, many times, we say 200,000, 300,000. Sometimes the country will only access 50,000. And then maybe that body is away here and you will not get anything about that. Also, only the country leadership, even the people, the understanding is if it is going out at 200,000 for the county, the doctor can come and just pick it up. So I want to know that I approach to date that if money is allocated for our county, uh, why would we are approach this time? Because many times we don't get the amount that is allocated, maybe at the end of the year because of the budget shortfall. So I want to know the rest uh, approach to that. Thank you. Okay, just before you respond, I hope you got this question. Yes. Good. So I'd like to, before you respond, uh, recognize the presence of uh, Senator Wade, who is the chairman on business and finance from the Senate, and the full chair of the Joint Committee. He comes with a big background. He has been chairman on the Ways and Means Committee from the House of Representatives, Deputy Speaker. And so we are privileged to have you in comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, the president is going quite well. I have been at all, in a way. Thank you. So, your response. Okay. Uh, our member, we acknowledge the constraint that has presented the standing development. Some of it has been from the management perspective, that is, in recent years, allocation has been made, and then the first then other Namde or Namde in full. And then there's also the, the legal and civil society component of it emanating from the the, the whole case from Hong County. We set a precedent for how the, the forms should be managed. And you can recall in recent years the use of county sitting for put on board and then the free work for implementing that those funds in the scope of the local government act, those three that were recently instituted as the county council by the by the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And then on the county administration side, the management mechanism, the, the financial managers and others, those structures are still not in place. But now we're standing for this year, the three point three billion still remains is still budgeted. In addition to the social development fund, which are the CSR coming from our uh, uh, concessions. Uh, we, we will again give the floor to Senator Bibo. Okay, just okay. before Senator Bibo, uh, uh, okay, so like I said, as a chairman, I will be in and out because of confirmation issue. Uh, to the minister, I may quickly because we have an issue here. We have rolled out the implementation of the local government. Do you care to comment on the existence of the National Transitional Traditional Council, which is now in the current budget as the Council of Chiefs and Heads, and by the law is supposed to be domiciled under the Ministry of Internal Affairs? Will you comment on that? Okay. Uh, we received information, though not formal or approved, and I may mean, correct myself here the information I feel, that the Ministry of Internal Affairs would rather that we budget for the National Council of Chiefs, which is in the law, than the National Council of Chiefs and LLP existed until then. So we will want to uh, respectfully defer this to the Ministry of Internal Affairs because they are asked that the resources that were originally meant for the National Council of Chiefs and LLD are located to the National Council of Chiefs. So I'm okay, sure now that it is allocated to the National Council of Chiefs, but by the law, 
That funding is supposed to be under the Ministry of Internal Affairs for yeah. supervision. But now it's still in the budget as a stay and move. That's why I want you to speak to. Okay, so that is that is more the mechanics of formatting the budget. But that's something we can correct right away with the okay. with the passage. Yeah, the passage through budget rate transfer as well. We can reallocate that. Oh, okay. So that was okay. Mr. Uh, Minister, I like to go first. Yeah. In the budget book, you made provision for uh, funding that comes from FDA, very new, for benefit trust fund, which is 30% of their rental fees. Uh, in your attempt to apply the law, you allocated them to the county where the end winter uh, be anyway. I didn't see you accounting for the share of the county. What you accounted for is the share of the affected communities. So the total amount of land rental fee that you go to the county should be sixty percent. Thirty percent for affected community. 30% for the county, that's 60%. He said you would have accounted for 30%. You care to explain why? And to also prove me wrong. The second part is that can you please explain to the very people their deficit in the county? Okay, thank you. 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 Of that, and I will wait a while until the local can lead to me. Thank you. Any other colleagues? Any concern? Okay, so Minister, you can you can respond. You won't respond to me. You can respond to them. Okay, uh, with respect to the allocation of the land rental fee, we will defer to our LRA colleagues because they are more in, I mean, more the specific detail because they supply that information to us. But for the deficit pool fund, uh, it's also a plenty contingency. Uh, one, the deputy pool fund has two components. One is the salary contingency. The civil service agency and the GSC are embarked on a personal audit. And then the Controller Accounting General Department gave us a pass based on the salary portfolio for the first two months of the year. Keep up with the estimate that if we annualize the salary payment for January and February, we should be around between 260 to 270 million. But we took account of all factors. At the time, ministries and agencies were not fully formed. County administration were not fully established. So we made additional allowance of about 30 million to account for those assumptions. So that stopped us to the two us the two and the seven that you see in the budget. Now we're standing. We don't know what will be the outcome of the GSC and CSA start of payroll audits. So half of the deficit pool form is set aside in the event where some of the numbers are realistic, then the salary for those ministries and agencies can be adjusted to cover up for the current or payroll strength. The other part of the deficit pool form is to <coughs> respond to emerging contingencies. For example, we, re we recently responded to an event in Riverside, the tragedy in Riverside. We have to respond to the, uh, uh, the event at Gudumura, for 
for example, and other emerging issues that arise from all functions of government. <coughs> Yeah, so I said the LRA should be able to give a more concise information on that because the specific allocation they liaise with FDA on, on, on those. We, we will, when, when the LRA makes a presentation, please note that we can always refer to it. The Ministry, the Ministry of Finance is going to be here throughout the year and as and when LRA speaks, please. Uh, you can get a piece. Mr. Minister, I, I understand the concern to get the NRA. NRA is really collecting. NRA are really collecting the money to get money into the consultant account. The law here is 60 percent, 30 percent for the affected community, and 30 percent is for the county. That is a special issue. And then we will look at that. And I collected, you, you accounted for that in the remedy already. I talk about the allocation, you left that out. And some of us, our accountants, we don't have major concession. So we we'll pay on the land rent of the year. For the last 20 years, our accountants in the Southeast have not been getting the land rent of the year. We need the portion for the affected community. So yeah, because the practice is always telling that that amount is actually a one due to people. And that's a violation of the law. I don't want to let you know. Thank you. Okay, it is noted for the issue senator is those earmark or ring time revenue, they are identified by the specific category like how for communities or district after. So depending on the information that we receive then the expenditure will be accordingly. Or now we send the same notes and we will use with the LRA for the details. And we require revision or redistribution of that amount to go through to accordingly. Well, thank you. Uh, Minister, before I forget, I'm not rushing to ask my question. But with the trend of disasters you know, happening in our country, I was comparing the allocation for the National Disaster Institute for the National Disaster yeah, Institute. I saw it was 600,000 dollars previous year. And then here again, I see the occurrence of the same amount of money. Nothing for, for operation. Everything there is for salary. My question is, hasn't this brought any concern to you that people are dying in fire, family are being displaced, uh, and that the government is doing nothing about it besides personal contribution? What is happening with the domestic and with the national disaster? Thank you very much, Honorable Senator. It is of serious concern to us. In addition to the, the, the social trauma that it causes every one of us, even from the resource allocation point of view, when these it, things emerge as emergencies, and then we don't see the agency, for example, reaching out to their own source, and then they don't ask it out for supplementary funds, it concerns us. It will also disrupt the budgeting process. And the reason it is that it is honorable is the issue of planning. This is why we are decided to go to do planning in a different way. For example, disaster management should be linked to climate adaptation. So that all of the agencies that are involved in that particular sector, climate related, whether EPA, whether it is the FDA or it is the MDMA, they should have a sector approach to how you can do prevention, you can do medicine. So, so in short, please, please, please. Well, what I want to understand, let me be real. All right. Let's start playing around on this matter. It's very important. I want to know why did you look at this particular institution to allocate additional funding 
so that people affected by this disaster can be helped based on relocation or whatever way. Why do you have money in Jamaica? Yes, so you know how you say it based on bigger disaster. How clearly that is. It is an institution. So the social so I'm going to indulge in so that you what I'm talking about. I, I will not agree. I will not want to listen to that because each of these institutions. If we allow the tenant to learn, then you will Yeah, each of these institutions have the inactive integral, the function. If you are asking the national legislation to institute new law to develop new laws, that's a big thing. It has the functions. And you are telling me that you want to redo the law on your own. I want to know why didn't you put money in there for people that are dying, family, little children, living, living behind, that have nobody to support them. What happened in there? I said, don't give me jumping around story. Thank you very much, Senator. I am not asking for the redoing of the law. I am saying that agency should have a forward planning approach. They should know that disaster occurred. They should know where, 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 which areas are prone to disaster and make the full open and submit it to the budget process. So going forward, sorry, I'm going to tell you how you Going forward, we have, that is why we are looking at all those things. Going forward, before the budget being submitted, you saw what is happening in Monrovia. And we responded accordingly. So you are saying that you are not submitting the budget to increase its allocation. On disaster management plan, we didn't see that. Can you see that? You didn't see a disaster management plan. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Well, let me just say this quickly. The senator is passionate about disaster. I come from Newport Town. Houses get burned almost every other month or week. What is presented by the ministry is proposal. And in our judgment, we can make we are So, Senator, you are covered. Uh, you are covered. Uh, let us not uh, drift a little bit more information from my county. Thank you, Honorable Chair. My input is um, follow up to question that Honorable Dobo asked. So, I'm referring to the document, the National Draft Budget, budget page X. The preface here, page X V R A V R. The last three sentences: the age of forestry revenue share agreement of forty percent, thirty percent, and thirty percent between the government, county, and affected communities, respectively. In the fiscal year twenty twenty three, there is a projection of forty six point seven four six million. For the affected areas. In your charts, you accounted for 30% only in the stated year. So, how can you adjust this? Instead of you trying to, to channel your burden to LRE, that the information that it is in your own document and you presented to this body. So, that's the information. Yeah. Information is noted, it is an oversight. We will bring up uh, the issue. So that as and when we are closing or uh, shutting down the entire year, we can make the necessary adjustments. Uh, we will. Any question here? The Senator from Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I go to the field, my name is Noel Brown from Chile. I want to talk about the, the national agenda, the address agenda. Because when I read the papers, the budget is more or less going to be tailored towards the arrest. How far have we gone in developing the agenda, the arrest agenda? Question. Thank you very much, Senator. The process for developing the arrest agenda is on course. A roadmap has been developed. A concept note has been developed, and these two have been presented to the cabinet and accepted in principle. So the next steps are for the cabinet to formally adopt that 
And then, as part of the budgeting and planning process, we will share it with the relevant units or committees of the legislature for purpose of information and consultation. And this will be followed by national and local level consultations. This time around, we will do county level consultation and district level consultation. So that is where we are now. As soon as we conclude on this budget process, the next major activity on the ministry and by the executive agenda will be to kick start the national development planning process. All right, so in the interim, how were the national priorities identified? So for the purpose of this budget, about 22 million were set aside to address elements of the arrest agenda that was captured in the 100 days in every room. The largest component of that were rules. And as the acting deputy government I'll mention, the training of the 10,000 youth in RCT. The <laughs> Development plans or agendas that we had before, in addition to the the May arrest agenda. Uh, we have decided to have a linked process. Meaning, for example, let me give an illustration. If we say agriculture or education, okay, let's say education, there will be the national policy component of education that will be ended by and of our big organizations like the Ministry of Education, the universities, and others. Then there will also be a country level component. Those areas that the national strategy will not capture, then the country agenda will capture that. Because remember, we have mechanisms for resource flow to the country. In addition to the CDF, the SDF, there's also the revenue sharing law. And also the local government others identify certain sources of revenue, like uh, real estate, for example, that should go to counties. So those will be resources that counties and probably districts and cities can use to take care of other priorities in sectors that may not be adequately captured by the national strategy. Thank you. Before you came in, there was this uh, instruments that were passed by the legislature, the revenue sharing law. Uh, how do we intend, LRA is here, uh, how do we intend to, or when do we intend to roll these laws out into the counties uh, so that uh, some of these revenues that are generated in the counties, we said portion of some of the revenues should remain in the counties. So maybe the two of you finally can comment on that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, how, to, when do we intend to actually implement these laws? Thank you. Okay, I will just make a statement and perhaps my colleague from the LR will give the specific details. The LR will not speak as they have not been okay. on my oath. Speak on the matter. Okay, okay. So, uh, as is our practice, most laws have to be implemented through regulations. So, the LRA has hired a consultant. The consultant has drafted the, 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 the regulation. So, they will kind of put on hold by the transition process. I mean, this is one of the outstanding agenda items for the executive that once we conclude these things, we'll be picking up on getting the regulation adopted. Uh, please, before you follow up, the LRA has come to defend her budget, a spiritual budget. We are discussing national spiritual issues. And so the minister will be requested to refrain from pulling in the LRA as the LRA is only here to defend our budget as far as expenditure is concerned. So any question asked on the expenditure issue, the minister will answer. Or if there are um, uh, information that are not available, the minister is going to be allowed to say that and then you can refer to us as and when you have uh, the information available. The LIA is, is only here to give you reason why we should drop our budget. You are going to be disputed. One of them.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Minister, um, a follow-up to the Senator's question um, regarding the revenue sharing. During the preparation of the budget, how did you consider that aspect to ensure that uh, the counties can begin to benefit? And where specifically in the budget you can point to that, if there is? Okay. My name is uh, Oromiyanji Fungo. I represent the people of Lima County through this district. Awesome. Okay, uh, the only element of revenue sharing in this budget is the county development fund. Because, as I mentioned earlier, the regulations for the revenue sharing law that we and other agencies of government need to use. So, once the regulations are adopted, we will begin to implement that. Then in the local government act, there is this structure called local government fiscal pools that comprises MFDP, Central Bank of Nigeria, Ministry of Internal Affairs, and the LRA that will determine on the annual basis the the, the, cap, the ceiling for local government revenues. So the two structures have to be put in place. One is the revenue sharing regulations, and then the local government fiscal board. When these are structured, and then the purpose of the local board will be the cap, the revenue city determined by this board will be submitted to the legislature. And those so, are so Minister, in other words, uh, in this budget, you did not capture revenue sharing as far as getting the counties to benefit uh, is involved, is, is concerned. Yeah, except the CDF. So let's 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 look let's look at uh, with the for, for the purpose of uh, time management, uh, we will work with the Ministry of Finance in their own budget up to twelve o'clock, and then we will go straight to the Revenue Authority. I have a few concerns quickly I need to raise, and then we'll take two questions from uh, the civil society if we have any. Please, uh, you'll be recognized by. The LBO. So if you have a concern, I'll be talking to the LBO to, to recognize the people who are speaking. So, um, Mr. Minister, I'm sure they are equal in terms of numbers in the budget, but I just let you look for the record that MS starts from A, and the last time I checked, A stands for agriculture in arrest. Let it also be noted that agriculture. Unless uh, there are funds for agriculture, donor projects that have been noted, and as we discuss this budget, we want to be uh, having the privilege uh, to have information on all funding because it's also probable that you've not included uh, some money for agriculture because if there's a national agriculture fund or account, there will be a lot of funding. Just looking for the record. Going to your your distribution again. I see 296 million for salaries, wages, and uh, compensation. I also know institutions that are either reducing staff or firing. Let me use that word. I don't know whether you consider that when you put in 297 million. Have you considered the reduction in staff that is happening across country before this 297 million? Or based on the fact that reductions have been made, do we expect this 297 to go even downward? Next issue on your debt portfolio. Look at your debt portfolio from the domestic point. It is noted that a significant portion of your domestic debt is to banks. T bills. And then we pay it. Is it only interest? If it's only interest, does that suggest to us that uh, we can uh, reduce the debt portfolio if we are only noting we are only noting uh, interest? 
Uh, and then uh, in a C dose, instead of redeeming T dose, I will just pay interest. If we are going to pay interest in the T dose, it means that again we can manage the debt portfolio such that we move especially the PSRP and other key areas that could be uh, affected from your from your distribution. Uh, those are my primary issues first. Based on your response, we may at the end of the day set up a, 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 a subcommittee to deal with the debt issue because we think, uh, in our view, from the committee perspective, it's a low energy food we can use to be able to find some uh, fiscal space in deciding where we can have. <laughs> I see the minister, minister is smiling. The minister saying, I, I can take it to the debt possible. So thank you for smiling, Mr. Minister. But based on your comments, then we uh, prepare to civil society. But two questions, I'll help people, if you need to be recognized uh, by uh, whatever you have, Mr. Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, starting with agriculture. Like the acting deputy minister indicated in your, in your presentation, we coordinate the national budget decision making with the aid policy. That is, resources are coming from external sources. And we should know that whenever we say external sources, it's not just all free budget support. Some are loans, for example, in the agriculture and other sectors as is in this day, a lot of external resources are coming into that sector and those sectors, some of which are loans contracted by our government. So in this case, it is just two sides of the same point, meaning different aspects of public funds. So in the agriculture sector, for example, there is over one, and over 40 million, about 40, 1.5 million that has a program, a combination of loans and grants for the agriculture sector this year. So which means the programmatic aspect of that sector is being taken care of. So then what the government budget for will be operation, some funds for the sector. Then on the salary budget, we rather anticipated that despite us using the annual last estimate for the first quarter or let's say the first two months salary, we made provision for a potential upward increment in the ministry of administrative payroll. That is, we expected, hoping that it will go the other way, that subsequent months payroll will be higher than what we paid in January and February. So until the payroll audit is completed, we pull our assumption that salary may go higher than the 296 million. But when that happens the other way around, it will notify the honorable legislature and on what to do with the SS, which is the around between four and five million salary contingency as in the deficit two On the issue of debt. Okay, the, the debt. So for the local financial institution, that is the commercial bank and the central bank, all the payments are interest. And these were based on the negotiations that we made with the commercial banks. And the negotiations were made on the premise that most of what was owed then, it was a combination of T-bills as well as infrastructure loans. So we agree with them that all the infrastructure loans owed by contractors will be converted to government debt and rolled over to subsequent periods. And with that, the understanding was that the interest to be paid for this year. So, so just one question quickly. Now, considering your fiscal space as is presented right now, and you are in the process of restructuring most of those loans to the bank, is it possible that the restructuring or the interest payment uh, can be either divided or put forward? Especially noting that you are passing the budget in April that you want to implement in just nine months. So that to create additional fiscal space, can we push forward our negotiation to the banks moving towards our next fiscal year? Just to create our fiscal space. Uh, we actually push back, we actually push a bank back 
on what they were asking for, so that the interest that we are paying is not even all of the interest, and not even all of the accumulated interest. It is really the current year interest, so that at least they can report to their boards and corresponding banks that the government has resolved servicing its debt. So there is no space to have this uh, space for them. We will see the committee that we're working on you to do uh, more exhaustive uh, and in depth analysis of the debt portfolio. Uh, as our committee is of the conviction that we need to bring it to the fiscal space and maybe, maybe on a school, in quotation, uh, debt will be a window that will be used. Uh, we expect that the, the, the police from the uh, uh, civil society do you are going to be asking questions or you cannot speak. So your questions are already written at home and then we will, uh, Honorable Dupu, will read your questions and then uh, we will get our responses. Thank you. Please, please call the, the civil society and the individual who is asking the question. Okay. Um, we, so we we I just want to add to what the chairman just said. So we're talking about you know open debate here on the budget. And I just want the media is carrying this uh, for the record that this committee allowed the involvement of the civil society in the budget debate. We're taking your considers a question and ask the institution so that you know that you are part of the process. In the future, we'll see where in our chamber's room we'll require you to speak in the chamber for an hour and just communicate on your behalf. So we we'll read just as you asked uh, to the Ministry of Finance. Uh, there is a social organization called R-Y-E-E-D. And uh, Samuel J. Coco, there is an institution. The concern here is, or the question, Mr. Minister, according to the budget, you allocated the constructors and zero for medical expenses for employee under the compensation of the employee. I don't know which institution, Ministry of Finance. Security issue and therefore must not be a secret. 
Civil society therefore recommends the publication of the detailed domestic debt so we know who we owe, just so we don't end up paying costs. That's a concern for Integrity Watch. Uh, we have Sister A. Nabiria. They said the arrest agenda does not address gender as the priority. How does the budget address the issues of gender mainstreaming across the sector? What are the concrete steps taken to ensure equal benefit and access by all citizens irrespective of gender? The last part, besides the measure of gender allocation, what are sector or sector allocation to address gender? As an, as an agenda, as sector needs. If you decide the issue of gender, how can, we, can that be reflected in the other sector? So, Madam Minister, a question comes from sector in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much. The first question about is the 5,000 to scratch out and zero to medical expense. I don't know which particular entity. But for the MFDP, we can say this. For a long while, there were no medical insurance. In this year's budget, the MFDP will resume medical insurance for its employees. For almost six years, there were no transport facilities, commission on disabilities, the National AIDS Commission, and the host of other government structures that are set up to principally cater to gender risk or gender sensitive issues. National Abuse Society, NAGDOG, and I mentioned there's a whole list of that. On this aspect of the gender policy focus for the budget, I will allow Honorable uh, Mogwa to, to address that because that is area where she has specialized in recent times. Honorable Minister, we are here in a hearing and our people want to know certain things from us. So we have to agree in this room when it comes to the debt issue, once you are presenting it to the committee, if you tell us it is confidential, we will not take it to the public. So for the record, it will be okay if you say it has national security implication, so you cannot share. I do not want Man Noah from District Number Three in Takata asking me a question, and I say it's confidential because you need me or us at the mercy to determine whether we need it out or not. Giving it out, if it will cause further problem, they should be told here and now that it is confidential because of. X, Y, Z, reason. You're not going to give us confidential information and share with them. Okay, and the order is good there. I will do that as well. Yes, because uh, again, we keep making the point. For example, we are only managing the portfolio, right? Ministry X signs a service agreement with Vendor Y. We only attested to it as a financial entity, and the Justice Ministry attested to it as a legal entity. The terms of that contract exist between the two parties. But the pay that claims, the agreement is between us and the vendor that this is how much we're going to pay you this year on this terms. Now, the, the implication of that information being made public for that vendor, we do not know. So that's why we thought to share it confidentially with the legislature rather than making it as a public. But in any case, a private commercial information. A private commercial information, we can publish it. That is the, the, the context in which we are speaking here. I don't think we'll get to that uh, after the subcommittee meet with the Ministry of Finance. So the last question for the society, I think you came back. 
again is still not clear. If it is the MLTP budget you're talking about, you can see here MLTP, uh, the Good Initiative for Youth Empowerment and Economic Development. Uh, I think the minister, according to your budget, means your final budget, you allocated 85,000 for scratch car and zero for medical expenses for employee on board the compensation. Wow. That's what I'm saying. The oral DNA will respond to that. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I think we have a detail of that aspect in our presentation. So we will just ask the question, we ask the question, and then we will be having the expenditure aspect of the commission. Uh, Mr. Minister, answer the question. <laughs> so, the information is actual. In the current budget, we have a little over 180,000. For the first time in six years that we put there for the Ministry of Finance staff. And also, there's 85,000 years for stretch cards. And that money, we can use, we can use, we can use, we can use, we have counted treasures. We don't have treasures in the country. We don't know. It's not necessarily being for the staff that are sitting in the room have to use for the discipline for internet services because they have to connect with the consumer general in terms of the different checks issues to provide all these at the different service centers that are available in Barca, in my TV, and in my home, and everything. In fact, as an additional information, the consumer general is off to the studio as of next week to make sure that we're talking about the decentralization, not on paper, but more in effect to ensure that it's working. Thank you. Thank you. So, big full call in the presentation. You can now, after the minister responds to the general issue, then you can do your presentation. Thank you. So, the issue about gender has been a priority even from the past government. And recognizing the importance of that, the Ministry of Finance, in collaboration with the Ministry of Establish what we call the general responsive planning and budgeting unit, which has been president and the Ministry of Finance. And the whole concept around that is to ensure that plans that are developed by different ministries and agencies, the impact is clearly measured in the budget. So no matter when you take the budget, you might not see, for example, specific general indicators. But there are complementary documents that go with the budget preparation. We do have what we call the budget policy notes. And it's in that note you're going to see detailed information about the impact of different programs and projects that are being implemented by spending entities. So when you see in the budget, we have collected out of nine spending entities. And in that nine spending entity, when you take the budget, for example, you see on our Ministry of Health, you see on our gender. You see on a measure of finance, you see specific uh, lines. You see transfer to GRPD program, and that GRPD stands for General Responsive Planning and Budgeting. We try to ensure that it stands up alone for proper accountability, so it not get mixed up. So, in that same concept, uh, has been approved by this administration. So, going forward, that's why you see even in my presentation. And the key emphasis on gender because if we are to ensure that the play uh, improve the lives of people, we have to be cognizant of the different needs of people, and we cannot do play in a neutral way with the mindset that it benefits everybody equally. So, with that in mind, it's something that we're very sure about that this year and in subsequent years, play is going to be a mandatory thing. That when you send me your city, whatsoever program, you have to tell us how every construct role, what will be the impact of that role on our farm owner, who the role is passing through our community, or who the role is passing through our village. What's the impact of that role, what of that role that you're doing on the community? So we're going to be very, very particular about that going forward. It's a priority for the government. We're going to really the, 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 the way we put our body is not clear. It's going to be clear. We're going to be more inclusive this time around. Thank you. So, we now uh, take the Minister for Administration, the Finance, to do the, the budget.
And let me just say before the chairman takes the microphone that for the CSO in the public, the hearing is in uh, segment. So the Minister of Finance will not answer all the questions to today for the public. As the sector come, sector here, the Minister of Finance will always be here in all the sector. So let me take our questions based on the sector so that we don't take the whole day on that. So thank you. We will now move to the Minister, Deputy, Administration, Finance. Doing the Ministry of Finance budget now. Uh, Mr. Chairman and the distinguished members of the member of the Joint Committee, my colleagues, the presentation I'm about to make is actually from this uh, document which is the which captures the Ministry of Finance and the Office and the Budget Performance Report for FY23, January to December, and the planning activities of FY24 uh, that we have right now. Thank you. And the presentation we have today is being made for our lab. Yeah, yeah. Can I have you? Happy. Can you please ensure that all the police have received happy? distributing uh, the, the submission from the Ministry of Finance as an, uh, as an agency. We'd like to announce, we are like to announce a subcommittee that will work along with the Ministry on the debt issue. Uh, that committee is going to be chaired by Senator Peter Duncan. Uh, members of the committee will include uh, Mariko from Bond County, Senator Blevo Brown, and uh, uh, Honorable Johnson will work along with them. Uh, it's a private member committee, and uh, the Senator from Rubaji will be an ex official, and I will be an ex official. We need to meet ASAP to zero in on the debt issue. Because it's a critical, critical mass to decide the entire expenditure. Thank you. Minister, Minister of Finance can proceed. We are working with Minister of Finance in, uh, in 30 minutes. Uh, we hope you do your 10 minutes presentation. We we'll do question and answer in 10 minutes, I mean, in 20 minutes, because we're going to do LRA before lunch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and distinguished members of the committee. My name is Joe McGill Jones, and I serve as the Deputy Minister of Administration at the Ministry of Finance. The presentation here today is given for PFM Law, but the Minister being on a, a mandatory travel to the island for the spring meeting has asked us to go with the authority from the IT Minister to present on behalf of the nation. Thank you. Our presentation today. Provided as you both of you have still appointed by the required different companies. We will provide you the FY23 budget. We will also do a summary execution. We will talk about the activities that were executed under the FY23 budget and we will dive into the FY24 proposed budget and the proposed activities. For FY23 budget, the Asia Finance School budget was 20.4 million. National claim on that budget was 148.8 million, and the total budget for the of Father on that was 149 million. In terms of the, the execution report, 
a closed field budget look at page two of the slides that I presented to you, you will see that during the fiscal year, the ministry has an appropriate receive an appropriation of 20.4 million, which constitutes 40% of the core appropriation. Those, those amounts affected five departments within the ministry. Of that amount, of the same uh, budget, a total of 1.8 million was allotted for national claims, which constituted 86% of the budget. However, at the end of the budget year, the actual expenditure for the ministry of finance for FY23 was 15.3 million. The next slide, which is slide three, uh, Minister, please note that uh, during domestic and international debt force on the ministry, discuss the ministry's budget in isolation of those two bonds. Okay. Because those two bonds have been elevated now to national discussion, please. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chair. So, on the economic classification for 2023, uh, if you look on, this, on, this, on the third slide, you will see compensation was 9, but the appropriation was 9.4, the allotment was 9.9, and the actual expenditure of 9.8 for the issue of finance at FY23. Goods and services, the appropriation was 7 million, 7.2, and lodging was 2.1, uh, the actual expenditure was 2.1. Grant special, uh, special programs, the, uh, the appropriation was 3.7, and lodging was 3.2, and the actual expenditure was 3.0. Non financial asset. There was, there was no appropriation in FY23 for them, but there was an allotment of 295, and there was an expenditure of 295 for the fiscal year 23, which brought up their expenditure total to 15.3 million as of FY23. In terms of execution of the execution analysis of the of goods and services, appropriation in was 2.8, the allotment of the fund of FY23 was 2, uh, 6.2. And the actual expenditure for 2023 was 6.2. Subsidy. Appropriation on the FY23 budget was 1.3. Allotment on the FY23 budget was 1.4. And the actual expenditure was 1.4. Grant and special program. There was a 17 million appropriation, 17.8 appropriation on the FY23. The allotment on that category was 3.2. And the actual expenditure was 3.2. Domestic liability, which is uh, the GSC and GSD, I can just name the, the total amount. It was 50.3 50. 50. as an allotment for domestic uh, allotment. Uh, uh, appropriation. Allotment was only 7.3 and the actual expenditure was only 7.3. Foreign liabilities was 56.5. Appropriation on the FY23. Allotment was 49.2. And actual expenditure. Minister, I have the floor. Interpretation, you have got 10 minutes, you use three. Please discuss the ministry's budget okay. in isolation of foreign and domestic debt. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For FY24, I would just want to. So, the information given the information from the chair of the committee will run into FY24 draft budget. This year, there's a draft in our, in our total budget. If you look at the comparative analysis of FY23, there was 20.4 million for the ministry for budget. In this current budget, we, we, we made a proposal of 16.8 million given the, the different activities that are available for us to do. On the 16.8, we have compensation that is 9.4, constituting 55% of the budget. Goods and services is 3.5, constituting 1%. Grants, Constitution 2.5 uh, million, which is 15 percent, non-financial asset, which is 1.3. In terms of the economic the analysis of the, uh, the comparative analysis here, uh, employee compensation for FY23 was 9.4. Employee compensation for FY24 is 9.4. Goods and services for FY23 on the ratio of finance was 7.2. And goods and services for FY24 on the ratio of finance is 3.5. There's a variance of 3.5 million reduction in the ratio of finance goods and services. Grant, there was, there was, for FY23, there was 3.7 million on grant for the ratio of finance, 
On the current year, there's 2.5 million. There's also a reduction of 1.1 million dollars. Non fiscal, non, non financial asset. There was zero dollar for 2023. And then under this current fiscal year, there's, there's 1.3 million, which is being uh, brought forth as a recommendation for us to move up. And I would like to speak about this. When we walk into the Ministry of Finance the 7th of September, it, is, and it was completely unpleasant. I mean, it's, I mean it's, uh, February, sorry. This is the ministry that housed and operated to take care of all of the different ministries in 107 in the country. Unfortunately, we had no function, laptops, or any equipment that people were using that building. This building has been there for the last six years had a single running water. So because of that, staff productivities, people will be doing the work. If they have to attend to nature, they will have to leave that work to go and attend to nature and come back. The, the, one of the issues raised by the civil society, specifically on the movement of, of, the, of the employees, we can all know that the harmonization was a disaster because it brought down the salary of those same employees. A lot of them had to now start looking out for different opportunities to do so. Performance of the job was then to have to really drop during the period and for us to rejuvenate that to ensure that they can have the ability to come back to work, there must be extra motivation. So some of the activities we put across have been to ensure that, for instance, we want to reactivate the biometric system to ensure that they are coming to work in a time that is very important. But to do so, we create a lot of incentives that have to do with the insurance scheme and ensuring that they have something that they can look up for, like their bosses, and ensuring that... I have to point to your attention quickly. Okay, sir. You... There's a total of 172 million for Ministry of Finance. If you discounted that by domestic debt and foreign debt, yes. 69 and uh, 50, uh, around 50, it's going to come as around 120 million total. Yeah, for the, the, the 100 total, total debt. Yeah, 129. 129. Yeah, for liability. If, for the, if you discounted that for 172 million, or you were not discussing 60 million, yeah. you're discussing almost 40 something. Million. You understand my point? I agree. I want you to discuss the Ministry of Finance budget from that perspective because I'm seeing here only 16.8 million you are discussing. So, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. You just need to tell us where we are. There's so, the reason why I did that with the National Claim Bulletin Project, look at page 10 of the document I gave you, is inclusive. Under the National Claim, I have 156 million, it includes grants. Chief, Chief. Chief. I'm saying to you, each of us got grant yeah. and subsidy on our respective budget. Yeah. The Ministry of Finance budget is 172. If you minus 129, which is domestic and foreign debt, you will have around 40, 44, 45 million. Yeah. It is the Ministry of Finance budget inclusive of grants and subsidy. Yeah. Please discuss that budget. So, the Ministry of that's, that's exactly what I want to uh, Mr. Chair. I will just go over there. The only thing I'm not touching here is the grant. I mean, the, the liability, the national thing that has to be specific to foreign liabilities and the and, and, uh, and, and domestic one. I'm not dealing with those numbers, but if you put our parity into the same envelope, that includes that number is 156 as compared to the 128. Minister, yes, please tell us straight. I think you are calling the chairman. The chairman is playing to this matter. Would I be interested in how you're going to address the domestic debt and the international debt? That is a management issue that has nothing to do with your portfolio. Tell us the Ministry of Finance, your compensation, your goods and services is what we are interested in. All our other things, Mr. Myers will deal with him on it. So thank you, thank you, Senator. Thank you. So after like, I did a comparative analysis for the budget, on our FY23 for goods and services, the FY23 we have the ministry has seven billion, seven point two billion, and we have set at three point five billion on this fiscal year. And the three point five billion we will try to break it and we we'll have the classification here. And it concludes it includes the different ranks. On the ministry of finance and development plan, for instance. We have a lot of different agencies. I mean, some uh, specialized units that we work with. 
that are, that are also paying off into our budget to come to boost the services. Then we have the APIs, we have the um, we have the APIs, we have the the, the impact that does the economic analysis also as part of the, the specialized unit. And also so a little over 10 specialized units are within the mission finance, the RSCU, the project manager unit. All of those institutions are specific and one of the 16 and one of the, the amount of the service. So when we break it down, that's why we brought the classification for the context of this presentation. We have the breakdown here, the digital breakdown that we can share with the community on each of them. But for the purpose of the community of the presentation program, we to the point and get it up to the point, we try to do a bigger number just to break it down with the lab into the specific questions to so see if this is what the user service is for and everything. So, in keeping with that number, we did a comparative analysis of the impact of the national team in terms of what we have that come directly on the Ministry of Finance. For grants on the Ministry of Finance as of last year, there was, I mean, subsidy, starting with subsidy, there was 1.3 million. This year, we reduced that money substantially to 542,000, which is end of for, for, for subsidy that goes to the Library of Children and Regulatory Authority. The goods and services, there's a, there's a full point, there was, there was 2.9, 2.8 million dollars on the FY23. This year, there's, there's, there's one of the same uh, goods on the national claim, there's 4.9, and the 4.9, will capture the bank charges that come from the Comptroller General Office of Interest, there are all the different ones we talk about, the contributions of the international organization. And we can give you the breakdown, we will have the detail number, the detail number here also for your review and also for our conversation. In terms of that, uh, the, the Senator has asked, I mean, the Chairman has asked that we need the domestic and foreign languages are. So I'll just run out to this point and in terms of the 159, also the numbers that I put up, and if you look at the activities on the one, the, the 40 million the, the chair talked about, these activities are broken on into what in actual what stays for the Ministry of Finance that we work with in terms of activities is 16 million dollars. So it's not it's not in the problem, 40 million dollars, or a lot of them are great that go out to different institutions. I guess mentioned one of them for instance. No, some of uh, what they, they also the budget we have of the they, they money that for is a grant for one of the budget as a name on the budget as a grant to LPRA for this right like we're pension and regulatory authority. So we give them that money because they're not fully functional since it was established to keep up the budget two three years back. They pay that money going on to them to support both operation and salary for them. And also we have on the they have the temple, for instance, on the areas, on the same water that we have, the temple, the library, the communication, operation is providing the government people to understand that the temple will provide telecommunication for all of the government ministries uh, at a certain rate. That money is charged on the ministry of finance, and it's because the ministry of finance has that responsibility to do the payment, so it comes on our budget as a partner of administration, so it will also lead to it's around 500, 500,000 in this government budget to go into the temple as well. And the next one, you look at central bank charges. Central bank charges around around three million dollars. Also, commercial bank is around one point four million dollars. Transfer in like a couple of like per year. The deposit pool fund is also on our budget, which is eight point eight million dollars. Which uh, which we spoke about earlier on is one of the major financial projects we carry out. Speak about speak about the deposit pool fund. I mean the deposit pool fund. So, as as indicated by the IT minister, we shall we shall further discuss. Yeah, as indicated by the IDMA, who should have this course, when we were drafting the budget as of, when we got the budget issued back as of February, we were working with the ministry, there was an analysis done on the payroll of January and February. And that analysis came up to the point that it was, it was between 2, uh, 245, 270 at that point. So the general assumption is that, the general argument is that given the fact that there's a payroll audit going up over the GSE, in the civil service, there is a high possibility that the payroll will remain at well pay off from the last half fiscal year or come down. But given the period that we constant at that time, even though the government was not formed fully, right, the projection was that we would hold it at 297. And the 297, there's all of the deposit pool fund, there's a little three to four, 
to 4.5 million dollars that they are contingency for salary that in the event that the salary went or any immigration agency would have done the audit, the audit was end up captured in there at the level it should be, then you will have to you have to stop them at a certain level. In the event where people there were goals or other things identified and then the salary comes down, so, there will so also so be a reduction. Was, is for the entire year. Yeah, for the entire year. So we rated and own the fact that we use we probably the only one quarter of the year. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's no effect negatively. It means that uh, out of that eight point nine million, they be divided to four that for two point two point two point three million that could be uh extra for the question. So I will allow my bank for the board to speak for the event of the or event. So, Honorable Chair, the 8.9 million, as we see in the budget currently, everyone, as the minister said, is experiencing the payroll impact. We plan the budget, as he said, we calculated based on the February and January and February assumption. And at the time, the full book of opening was not strong. So, now as budget comes in, we now see the impact of the payroll, so that the amount is being reduced gradually. Yeah, as gradually move towards the yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So just so just so further elaborate on the feeling uh, questions about the, the, the amount of also the chair project. I guess that also let them know that there's some money going out to the interim uh, leadership of the NYC, the satisfied public accounting, we have the F1 tree level also. As a money that is on this this mutual finance budget, but so when the envelope comes out, it's a whole big talk that you see of the mutual finance has 172 million as their budget. But when you disaggregate it and take away all of the commitment for international organizations, the three level, all the different organizations we talk about, what is left as a mutual whole budget, including salary, that we have is 16 million. Of that 16 million. There's 9.9.4 million of the already committed to salary that is out there because as of when we were working, the total number of employees we had was 968. And that 968 is still sitting until the audit can be done and know exactly whether we're going up or we're coming down. Thank you. Okay, okay so, uh, Senator, I. The administrative term is. Expired, it is a presentation. We will now refer to our colleagues. Because of timing, we will restrict ourselves to not more than two questions on our two minutes. Uh, that is, the person in ministry and you will interact for two minutes. Starting with the family. Uh, for the civil society, I hope you, uh, you have questions that went into NFDP presentation. Please uh, write your questions and they will be sent to us. Um, I wasn't here for the minister's presentation, but I think I can follow it through for documentation. Um, my concern has to do with the 16 million. And maybe I will touch a little bit because you brought up ECOWAS trade levy uh, with that hope. Um, so, is the Ministry of Finance? On your division is responsible for paying for the services to government entities that it see from the telco. So the way the no, is it is yes or no? No, it will be a difficult to provide a yes or no. I just want to no, outside of the Ministry of Finance Not contracting those services, mm -hmm. do you pay for other agencies to use those services? Yes. Okay. Do you also pay for the public service usage of light from LEC? Yes. Are you service the debt? Yes, we're doing a private business. Okay. Um, so that that includes part of that forty something million right. you're talking about. All right. Okay. Um, are you paying Equa? Are you paying Equa We then when we took over, what we met on the was so as part of our commitment, we then we have several meetings, and we then pay off 
some some time with uh, uh, some money up to March of last year. I mean, we just pull up the exact amount to pull it up to show you how much we pay. But because of that payment, the airport treaty, like I said, has uh, the, the, the airport treaty has started to receive the yeah. end of the return on the airport. Then my last concern: Do you do it all of this? I mean, for the pay for the temple. Yes. And those with, those with, and I'm not talking about holdings of the salary of your okay. employees. I'm talking about do you, when you pay for the telco, do you distract, uh, uh, do you extract the holdings? So that aspect, like the telco payment center, is on our budget, but when, when the budget is raised, the budget is consumer to work directly in both sides. So, I mean, I'm looking for the procedure. I think I'm talking about my problem is. I'm going to LT, I mean to LRA, and ask them because some of these agencies have not paid their withholdings, and it's the withholdings that pay your salary and my salary and pay for goods and services. And you, as Ministry of Finance, are paid, you instruct companies that pay to do withholding. So, do you do any withholding from them? Yes, the control of your own. Don't go far. You want to hold. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. And it just uh, to follow up to the sense of issue. Uh, Ministry of Finance, you pay the telco, you pay services to uh, LEC, and so. And you are aware that this institution over time collect. Taxpayer money, the GST that is done for them, they use it. The, the holding of people's salary. Okay, if somebody would have gone to court, there will be a class action for the NEC, for the MPA, the government institution that take the withholding. My personal money. And I, think I want to try ask the question because I will sue probably. The government, you know, found that all of our taxes pay for the last six years are being a lawmaker that is not related to the LRA I want to issue. I want a certificate from the LRA. I want to ask that question. So if you notice that they are not doing it, how are you going to collect the government money? If you pay NEC, are you going to deduct the record? The debt they owe you. Section 67 of the code will give you the power to do so. Third party payment. I will do it. Because you want it. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, I'm only really concerned about it. Uh, how you use your money, whether you get it from here and I'm only really concerned about that part. Now, those institutions that only the government, if you pay in here, you should deduct the money from here. Thank you. Have you no response? So, Senator, thank you for. So one thing we can do on our end as administration is that different vendors and contractors that we that we find a subcontract to do piece of work for us and still maintain the budget and finance on our administration. Institutions outside of our jurisdiction, I would help with A, the Office of Controller and Accounting General. So what we can look up here at the to move forward is that as a ministry, we will work with the controller and accounting general office to look at the books. In those institutions that we have that we got to pay from them, that the requisite law is applied, it is not being applied in why, but we apply in those that we can look at to make the most power take correct actions. Okay, so uh, before, yeah, I guess you let's take note of time to take you out the very uh, Let me take you to your presentation. The aspect of page four, which talks about execution analysis, and then to page 12, which talks about the comparative analysis with specific reference on the use of goods and services. Beginning with page four, the execution analysis, you see there is an actual expenditure of today of six billion. 298.6, something like that. Yeah. 
If you go back to the analysis, the comparative analysis, if you look at goods and services, you can do a uh, projected for this year, approximately 50%. That's a downward trend. And I want to say thank you for that. But here, uh, you mentioned here that when you walk into the Ministry of Finance, there was no functional computer. You also mentioned that most of the workers are demoralized, and so you are trying to do something to pick up their motivation. So you are not just something within the budget. The other still, you mentioned that you're going to purchase two buses so that um, our workers will be transported and you're going to put in place a biometric system around to be used for signatures. All of these things contributed to motivation. My question is, Comparing the 6.2 million that was extended in 2023 down with a downward trend of approximately half of the money, 3 to 5 million that we will use, yet you are budgeting additional costs. What are the non essential items that we discover that were not necessary to bring power into this budget for which you did? You know, you the uh, you reduce the the goods and services yet with additional additional items that will build up motivation. What are those non-essential things that you discover? So thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, so first, thank you for realizing the the reduction we had in our budget. So we walk in was a point of having a realistic conversation as to what we need to do to move out. Just to provide full disclosure, the amount for F123 is still on audited. So for us to move forward on the F123 activities, we are waiting to make a full NOF disclosure as to what the previous our predecessor spent this money on. We're picking up the video to pick up the activities and then the furniture activities to look at them to see what was happening. Among them, we thought that some of the issues that are very important to move the leadership forward were some of the liable paying meetings with all the five parts and different things as to what we want to do as a ministry in the immediate short term to move forward. For instance, that was me. But that is really if you can just be strong for us. Running water system in the building to while we work on the other major ones that come up, it will be a relief for us because we are the only one who goes to the And if there's no water, then we have to get outside the building. That's one. Two.